This happened at the time when I was in kindergarten. I watched from my bedroom window as my dad drug my mom's limp body into the woods behind our home, dug a shallow grave and buried her. I remember him phoning 911 and concocting a story about her going missing. I'll never forget how masterfully he handled the police questioning at our home that day. Perfectly reciting his phony recollection of events, crying at the right moments and angrily demanding that officers bring his wife home. Time passed and mom's case grew cold, eventually becoming an afterthought. Dad went on with life parenting my sister and me, and things were normal. Until it happened again. I staggered out to the back porch one night to witness my dad carrying the lifeless body of my neighbor into the woods. Just as with mom, he dug a shallow grave and proceeded to bury him. Once again, he dealt with the police with ease, when suspicion against him arose. I remember him making eye contact with me as he walked the cops to the door, an unspoken understanding to remain silent about the situation. Life moved forward and things were quiet at the house. Until it happened again. I stood in the backyard and watched silently as my dad carried my sister's dead body out of the house and towards the woods. All of a sudden he paused, laid my sister on the ground and turned to look at me. We stood facing each other in complete silence, unsure of what to say or do next. After what seemed like an eternity, a weeping voice broke the stalemate. I can't continue to keep silent about this. I'm sorry, but when the police come I'm going to tell them the truth. You really think they're going to believe a child did it? Grab the shovel and get digging. Ready or not, here I come. I would shout. My boy as a toddler had loved this game. It was like hide and seek, but with our own little twist. You see, once you found who you were seeking, you had to bop them on the head with the foam bat. If the hiding person managed to dodge the bop, you had to chase them through the house until you caught them or they made it to the sofa. It always ended in fits of giggles, and occasionally the odd injury from tripping over a cable or toy on their escape route. It was good fun, that's all it was. Hide and bop, we called it. As my son grew older, our games grew infrequent, but every now and then he would ask to play it and I would happily oblige. Seeing my now lanky boy trying to fit into the hiding spaces he once fit into so easily, was hilarious, but often led to a feeling of melancholy that was hard to shake. He was getting too old for these games. Once he became a typical teenager I knew we would never play again. As he grew surly and angry at the world, I retreated into my own wishing away the days until he would be an adult who could look back on the teenage angst and laugh with me at the absurdity of it all. We never made it to those days. At 17, he came to me and confessed his girlfriend was pregnant, and she was already five months along. At just 40 years old I would become a grandmother. I mourned the life he was losing but also rejoiced at this new path he would take, and eventually I was thrilled to have a grandson who looked just like my little boy. I know it was hard for my son. He was too young, too inexperienced, his teenage angst still rampant. 
fatherhood didn't change that. His beautiful son didn't change that. As a toddler, I taught my grandson to play hide and bop. It was the most adorable thing, his infectious giggles filling the air just as my sons had many years before. I would play it with him whenever I visited, his parents didn't play with him much, so I made sure to spoil him and play for hours on end whenever I could. I wish I'd played it with him more often. I wish I'd taught my son to be a better father. But most of all, I wish that the one time my son actually did play hide and bop with his baby, he'd used the foam bat instead of a real one, your honor. My grandmother had a power that none of us could explain. She could predict the future and was never wrong. She always knew when people were pregnant, even when they were only a couple of days in. We always trusted what she said and used it to keep us safe. When I was five, she told me that I would die by drowning. This put the fear of God in me and I refused to take a bath from that point forward. The problem was that our house only had a bath so there was no way for me to get clean. My parents eventually made me shower outside using a hose pipe after the smell had become unbearable. We lived only a few minutes from a swimming pool, but I refused to ever step foot it due to the fear. One time my siblings pushed me into the pool as a prank. I had to be given CPR by the lifeguard as I had sunk to the bottom. There were never any more family visits to the pool after this. I am in my 30s now and still hold on this fear. I have not gone near the ocean even though my wife and kids keep begging me to go. I finally relented under the condition that I didn't have to go anywhere near the water. We booked a house that was only a 5 minute walk from the beach. I could see the happiness on my family's faces as they headed off to the beach that morning. They promised that they would only stay a few hours. I was cleaning up the mess that my son had left on the top floor, when my foot went flying after I stood on one of his toys. I ended up falling down the stairs and landing heavily on my back. My body was in agony and I couldn't move. I must have bit my tongue because there was blood in my mouth. I tried to turn my head to spit it out but was unable. I was having trouble breathing at this point as the blood was blocking my throat. My last conscious thought was that I was drowning in my own blood. <laughs> 